What do you think when you look at this plant? <laughs> I have to tell you, a lot of things came to my mind when I used to look at this plant in the past, but one thought certainly never crossed my mind, which is, okay, Laura, this is going to be your future working field, especially when you know my background. I originally come from a tiny little village in Bavaria. It can be quite conservative there, and my dad is a cop. So... <laughs> When I decided to work with hemp after my master degree, there were a lot of questions coming from my family, as you might be able to imagine. But just as I shared with them my journey, why I really love hemp, I want to share my fascination with you today and explain to you why I think it's actually a plant for the future that can really save this planet. But to clarify it, it's not going to be another legalizer talk, in case you were wondering, because many times I know this plant is associated with this kind of topic, but this is not what I'm talking about today. I really want to look at all those other parts that are so many times overlooked when it comes to this plant. But, of course, when I told my family, the first question was, Laura, is it legal what you're doing? And is it legal in Germany? So, to always get rid of their concerns very quickly, I've shown them this picture here, which is a hemp field in northern Germany that I've been visiting. And you can find a hemp field like this in many places in Germany, actually. This is industrial hemp, so it has nothing to do with psychoactive attributes, or THC. It's actually totally innocent. And therefore, it's allowed to be cultivated in Germany again since 1996. Right now, we find about 7,000 hectares in Germany, which is not that much. It's like 2% when you look at all the agricultural land that we're having, but it's something. And that's the kind of hemp that I'm going to talk about. But, of course, like answering one question usually always brought up another one, which is, okay, Laura, we got it, but if it's not for smoking or drugs, um, what is it for and why did you decide to work with it? And to make them really understand my personal motivation behind it, I always go back to my studies. And I want them to really get a picture of how I felt, because when I was about to finish my master degree, I have to admit that I didn't really feel motivated to look for a future career if I couldn't personally see a future planet. And I couldn't help it. And I couldn't ignore all those problems in the world. So, to actually get out of this funk, I decided I'm going to do something about it and take action. For me personally, it was the best to get into entrepreneurship. So, I went to startup weekends, I informed about environmental topics, social impacts. And when I did that, I actually came across the ham topic and also met my co-founders. And I can tell you, ever since then, my motivation was on, because I found out a lot of great things about this plant. I found out that maybe my mom didn't like hemp in the past, but the mother of us all, Mother Earth, loves it and has always loved it, because it helps her with her biggest issue right now, which is global warming, of course. I actually found out that hemp is binding up to four times more CO2 than trees can, which is impressive. And if you think about it, how fast hemp can grow, it's even more impressive. Because hemp is growing up to five meters within just three to five months. So imagine how much CO2 could be binded quickly. And if there's one thing we don't have right now, it's actually time to save this planet. So I was amazed, but it's also not the only thing that hemp does for the environment, there's another big advantage. It's actually helping the soil, which is also a big CO2 binder itself, to be even better, because it detoxifies our soil with its roots from heavy metals and all those kinds of things that shouldn't be there. And it helps it increasing the living organisms in the soil. And therefore, it can bind even more CO2. So check, check, awesome, I thought, okay, I'm going to read more into this. But don't get me wrong, 
as amazing as I thought this is, it still didn't entirely convince me to decide, okay, this is gonna be your daily working field. It needed something else on top of that. Because, like it or not, we still live in a world that cares more about profit than actually environmental health or the safety of this planet. And therefore, I always believe that an environmental game changer really needs to come with a lot of different benefits, also for a lot of different industries. And hemp, I can tell you, does exactly that. It offers something that Mother Earth really needs right now, which is a business plan. It actually makes industries wanting to invest in her by giving her a business plan. And there is a lot of industries that can profit from it. As you can see it here, this is one of those industries that can actually not just profit from it because hemp is binding CO2, but it can also offer them a new, more sustainable raw material. The paper industry, for example, is right now a big driver of our deforestation, which is also not helping global warming. And every year we use actually forests in the size of Portugal. And that's devastating, especially if you would know that actually before we use trees for paper, we've been using hemp. For example, the US Declaration of Independency and also some Bibles were already written on hemp paper. Until the late 19th century, we've been using hemp for paper. We just kind of forgot about it. So hemp could really clean up this industry and make a change. Another industry that could really be cleaned up with hemp is the construction industry. Our construction industry right now is really causing up to 40% of the emissions worldwide that we're having. That's a lot. And hemp is genius because it can be an insulation material, it can be used in floors and walls, and it actually stores more carbon than it requires to be made and transported. This is called hempcrete, so not concrete, but hempcrete. And it's really storing carbon, that's why it's called carbon negative. Another big industry that uses a lot of our planet's resources is the fashion industry, the textile industry. Right now, cotton is the raw material in the textile industry, but it could also be hemp. And I don't mean that in a way that it's just for those kind of clothes that might come to your mind that you have seen or that are a little bit old fashioned and a little bit stigmatized. No, it can really be a severe replacement for cotton because it can actually be way more efficient. It also needs way less water, way less pesticides. So it's really an, a great replacement for cotton. I could go on and on about different industries and what hemp can do. There are even researches about it as a new biofuel, as a replacement for combustible plastic. There's so many possibilities. You might have heard of it in cosmetics. Tons of usages. But the industries that I decide, the industry that I decided to work in is actually the food industry. Why did I do that? Because for me it was the perfect match. I've been vegetarian my whole life and became more and more vegan over time. And hemp actually offers also a great nutritional source because it's full of protein, it has a lot of amino acids, and it can really be a force you have to reckon with when we face all this growing population. And yeah, it can really be a source for uh, plant-based meat, milk alternatives, and all those kinds of things. So it's also promising in that part. Pretty much, it's great, right? Like you hear all this and you think, what the heck? It's awesome. And I couldn't help it, but when I told my family all those arguments, I was like, okay, there are some questions that I'm having now. Because if hemp is that great, why do we not make as soon as possible and as quick as possible the most use out of it? It was a mystery to me, because if you listen to it again, like just to sum it up quickly, it's an easily cultivated plant, it's binding heaps of CO2, very quick, and it's a sustainable raw material for so many different purposes and industries, and it has a zero waste potential. 
That sums it up pretty good and sounds pretty good, don't you think? Yeah, but what is it then? For thousands of years, we've been using hemp for so many different things. But at one point, we just started to look at one single aspect of the plant and kind of started stigmatizing it. I mean, I have to admit, I did it a little bit myself. But we might have missed out on years of research and technology development because of that. But of course, we can still change that. If we start talking about it now, and if we start feeling the hope of this perspective now, if we really destigmatize it now, we can make it a priority again to bring back this raw material. We have to rewrite the current business plans that actually work on and with this planet. We have to write a business plan for Mother Earth. It's really something that I want to also make a little bit more practical for you if we look at an example, for example. So to make it visual, what would happen if we actually made a business plan for Mother Earth? It could be that our future looks like this. So if you're humble and say that we would just use 2% of the current agricultural land that we're having worldwide right now, we could actually already bind by just growing hemp there more CO2 than Germany emitted last year with just 2%. So imagine what an even higher percentage could do. If you ask me how I see the future world, I really see a world full of hemp growing outside, <laughs> sustainable industries, of course, and happy family dinners. Because even my dad is a ham fan now and proudly talks about it, not just with us, but also with his police colleagues. So let's destigmatize it. Let's look at ham, at all things like ham, in a new way. There might be even more potentials out there that we don't even know about. But let's be hopeful. Ham to the rescue. Thank you. <laughs>